Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Jambo, Namaskar, and a very good morning to you all. On behalf of His Excellency Ambassador Willy Bett, the High Commissioner of Kenya, and all the staff of Kenya High Commission in New Delhi, I am honored to welcome you to this virtual event to celebrate Kenya's 57th anniversary of Jamhuri Day. Jamhuri is a Swahili word for republic, and the holiday is meant to officially mark the date when Kenya became independent on 12th December 1963. Jamhuri Day is therefore regarded as the most important day in Kenya, marked by numerous festivities which celebrate the country's cultural heritage and looks back at her journey to independence and self-governance. However, due to the prevailing circumstances, this year's Jamhuri is being celebrated virtually. Allow me, therefore, to unveil the program of events during this virtual event. We will begin with the national anthems, first that of India, followed by that of Kenya. His Excellency uh, Ambassador Willy Bett, High Commissioner of Kenya in New Delhi, will then make his speech and later invite the Chief Guest, Sri Rahul Chabra, the Secretary of Economic Relations at Ministry of External Affairs, representing the Government of India. We will then play a short video highlighting key tourism and trade opportunities that exist in Kenya. This will then be followed by a few songs and photographs depicting Kenya's long journey to independence. The celebrations will culminate with a vote of thanks. I now request that we listen to the national anthems of India and Kenya. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency Ambassador Willy Bett, the High Commissioner of Kenya in New Delhi. Ladies and gentlemen, Chambo, Namaskar. His Excellency Mr. Rahul Chabra, Economic Secretary, Government of India. His Excellency Mr. Alem D. Waldemariam, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps. Distinguished Excellencies, fellow Kenyans, friends of Kenya, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the High Commission of the Republic of Kenya in New Delhi, and on my own behalf, I take this opportunity to welcome you to this celebration marking 57th anniversary of Kenya's independence. I also sincerely thank you for honoring our invitation out of your busy schedule to join us in this platform, which is now becoming our new norm. Today marks a historic and glorious day for our country, Kenya. On December 12, 1963, a new Kenya was born. This day, referred to as Jamuri Day, is the symbol of rebirth for our nation and presents an opportunity for each and every Kenyan to renew their commitment to the ethos that constitute the fabric of our identity as a nation. It is a pivotal moment that marks the revival of our nation the affirmation of our identity, sovereignty, and the realization of our aspirations for freedom and dignity. On this day, we pay tribute to the Founding Fathers who paid an extraordinary price in order to realize 
our collective aspirations for self-determination, which has enabled us to fully enjoy the freedoms gained from their sacrifice. Jamuri Day, therefore, affords us an opportunity to celebrate the remarkable achievements attained through deliberate policies since independence that continue to distinguish our country as a beacon of peace and stability, as well as a regional reference point in terms of economic growth. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya and India enjoy warm and cordial relations which have been nurtured over the years through friendly interactions and close cooperation at bilateral and multilateral levels. Our formal collaboration can be traced back to the pre-independence period. India and Kenya share a common legacy of struggle against colonialism. Many Indians participated and supported the freedom struggle of Kenya. There is a vibrant community of Kenyans of Indian origin living in Kenya, some of whom have distinguished themselves as lawyers, doctors, and scholars. The two countries have had and continue to have high-level exchanges which have created a desired momentum for advancing the relations between Kenya and India. His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta undertook a state visit to India in the year 2017, while His Excellency Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a state visit to Kenya in 2016. During these visits, the two countries were able to sign several memorandums of understanding in different fields that have further enhanced the level of cooperation between Kenya and India. Both Kenya and India will be serving as non-permanent members of the United Nations Security Council for the year 2021-2022 term. We extend appreciation for the support received from the Government of India that led to our success in these elections. The two countries have shared values in rule-based international order and have initiated a mechanism of working closely together during their term in the UN Security Council to champion the common agenda for the benefit of humankind. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at independence, our founding fathers identified three enemies, poverty, ignorance, and disease. Over the last 57 years, we have made great strides in surmounting these challenges. We are here to celebrate as a country together with you, valued friends, the great strides we have made in realizing these objectives, although with enormous challenges. The economy has grown and also diversified from that of export earnings based on primary commodities to that driven more by the service industry. With a robust infrastructure, a well-connected and ex expansive transport network, a dynamic and multicultural society that is highly skilled and knowledgeable, and a strong and fast-growing middle class, Kenya offers unique opportunity for trade and investment. Kenya's geopolitical location at the confluence of the Great Lakes, Horn of Africa, and the Indian Ocean strategically makes it a gateway to Africa's major trading blocks, as the East, such as East African Community, the ESC, and the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA. Potential investors from India and within the region are encouraged to take advantage of our geostrategic location to access these markets. The story of digital innovation in Kenya, especially mobile application, has revolutionized citizens' banking system. Ushahidi, a crisis mapping tool, and HiHub, the tech incubator. These local in innovations have triggered digital participation and given Kenya a reputation for developing digital solutions. The innovations had a local problem solving at their core and have made it to the international stage. The success of M-Pesa, Ushahidi and HiHub have led to Kenya being dubbed the Silicon Savannah of Africa. In order to realize the independence dream, given the local and international dynamics, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta has committed to a transformative agenda, the Big Four Agenda, that is manufacturing, universal health care, food security, and affordable housing. This is to ensure socioeconomic growth and prosperity for all Kenyans. The message we therefore have today for our de development partners is 
investors and entire international community is that Kenya is open for business. Opportunities are found and that the hospitality of the Kenyan people based on African socialism is unparalleled. In terms of tourism, Kenya is one of the preferred tourist destinations in African region. A combination of colorful cultures, world heritage sites, mountain climbing, bird watching, adventure holidays is sparkling. Uh, sparkling beaches and of course game safaris are indeed visitors magnet. On 1st July 2020, amidst COVID-19 pandemic, Kenya was awarded a safe tourism seal stamp by the World Travel and Tourism Council, WTTC, for putting together health and safety measures aimed at ensuring safe reopening of the tourism sector. Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, is the world's only wildlife capital. A short drive out of Nairobi Central Business District is the Nairobi National Park. The Masai Mara National Reserve is regarded as Africa's greatest wildlife reserve. Annual wildebeest migration occurs between August and October. The spectacle has, has projected the reserve to be afforded the eighth wonder of the world in the year 2007. India being among the top source markets for Kenya tourism is encouraged to continue sampling these marvels. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has led to a dramatic loss of human life worldwide and presents an unprecedented challenge to humankind. Governments have taken drastic measures such as imposing countrywide lockdowns and closing borders to arrest further spread of the pandemic. In this regard, the Republic of Kenya highly appreciates the support extended by the Government of India that ensured a successful evacuation of distressed Kenyans in India to their homeland. Kenya is pleased to note that India is in advanced stages in developing a COVID-19 vaccine and hope that Kenya will be among the first beneficiaries of this development. Lastly, distinguished excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are right in the festive season. Christmas Day approaching in a few days' time, while the new year will come thereafter. I therefore take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous new year 2021. Once again, I thank your excellencies for honoring our invitation and may God bless you all. May I now take this opportunity to invite our chief guest, Sri Rahul Chapra, Secretary of Economic Relations, to make his remarks on behalf of the Government of India. Thank you. Namaste, Excellency and distinguished guests. I am very pleased to extend warm greetings to Your Excellency, the Government and the people of Kenya on the occasion of Jamuri Day on 12 December. India and Kenya have a strong foundation of multifaceted bilateral relations. Over years, with regular high-level visits, intensive and increased bilateral engagement in all fields, as well as revival of institutional mechanisms, our relations have acquired greater depth and breadth across areas including political, economic, defense, human resource development, and people-to-people -people exchanges. Many Indians have made Kenya their second home, during the COVID pandemic, telephonic conversations between External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar and Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Rachel Omamo have further strengthened our relations. The two leaders discussed issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic and cooperation in bilateral and multilateral fora. India and Kenya are now non-permanent members of the UN Security Council for the period 21-22. We need to work jointly for the reform process of UN and its organs to make the institution more democratic, representative, transparent and efficient so that it can deal more effectively with the myriad challenges of the contemporary world. India has fulfilled its political commitment and gifted anti-HIV and other life-saving medicines to Kenya in the pandemic times. 
These medicines would be useful in the treatment of the novel coronavirus and other life-threatening diseases to the people of Kenya. This is only fitting given the very close ties that our two countries enjoy and given the closeness of our two peoples. I express satisfaction that during my period as the Indian High Commissioner to Kenya, upgradation of the iconic Rivatex factory in Eldoret under India's line of credit of US dollars 30 million, this factory was inaugurated by President Kenyatta in June 2019. Modernization of the factory revived the textile industry of Kenya and provided direct employment and growth in incomes of cotton growers in 22 counties of Kenya. India is a committed partner to Kenya in the area of economic growth, skill development, capacity building and training. India is always ready to share with Kenya experiences in our initiatives such as Make in India, Skill India, Startup India and Digital India. India can be an effective and valuable partner for Kenya in realizing President Kenyatta's Big Four agenda. India is taking several initiatives in Kenya in the areas of manufacturing, housing, healthcare and food security, which fits into Kenya's Big Four priorities. I take this opportunity to convey on my behalf and on behalf of the government and the people of India to you and the people of Kenya good health, prosperity and success in the fight against COVID-19. Namaskar. Kenya gives you one of the biggest markets in the world. It gives you access to East Africa, which is a market of 200 million people. one of the amazing destinations for business in Africa and in fact is situated in the world in a place where we are all very well connected. center literally of the continent and at the center literally of the world. From Kenya, you're within 13 hours of any point anywhere in the world by air. destination for various reasons of culture, of history, of commerce, of people to people connections, government to government connections. We 
have an open door policy for investment. So we encourage investment, we encourage through incentives. And because Kenya has an authentic African safari product, as well as white sandy beaches at the coast. The combination of these two becomes interesting for investors to think where to go. Kenyans are go-getters. We are not just consumers. We are creators, we are producers, we are manufacturers. got one mama, you only got one pa, you only got one life to live, no matter who you are. You can go the whole world over, every city has its dawn, but everybody living has one place where he was born. Mine is Kenya, so warm and wild and free. You'll always stay with me here in my heart. My land is Kenya, right from your highlands to the sea. You'll always stay with me here in my heart. Here in You 
got one childhood and the memory that springs when you see your house the tree you climbed and all those precious things the faces of the friends i had the images that fall when i close my eyes in the land i love the land where i was born my land is kenya so warm and wild and free you'll always stay with me here in my heart my land is kenya right from your highlands to the sea Stay with me here in my heart, here in my heart. My land is Kenya, right from your highlands. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity once again on behalf of His Excellency Ambassador Willie Bett, the High Commissioner of Kenya, and the entire staff of Kenya High Commission to sincerely thank you for finding time off your busy schedule to attend this virtual event in commemorating Jamuhuri Day with us. Thank you very much.